Hello and welcome to another video and uh, this is a continuing or a continuation of the series of uh, videos following the update of the 5e wiki and in this one we are going to be looking at the uh, party sheet. So uh, let's uh, open it up. Uh, this is the Dungeon Master's view um, and so we can see that the party sheet has uh, got a, a main page here with uh, a bunch of rollable boxes down the bottom and down the right hand side we've got some tabs, we've got an inventory, uh, an order tab and an XP tab. Uh, now, it's not just the DM that can see the party sheet, the players can also see the party sheet, um, but they have a, a cut down version uh, of it. Uh, so we can see here that we've got the inventory and the order tab, and that's all it's showing by default to the uh, players. If we switch back over to the DM view, the DM has a couple of options in here under game. Party show characters uh, to clients, uh, we'll turn that on, and party show inventory to players, and we'll turn that on. So these are two options uh, which will show a bit more of the party sheet to the uh, players. If we switch over to the players view now, we can see that they have the main tab here uh, as well. And if we look at the inventory tab, you can see that they've got a couple more boxes uh, on the inventory. Uh, and players will never see the uh, XP tab. Um, that's not an option for them too sure because well, the players don't really need it. Um, so that's the differences between the uh, DM view uh, and the uh, players view. Um, now the party sheet is pretty much useless uh, unless the dungeon master uh, puts all the characters onto the party sheet. So that's the first thing that you would need to do when you're starting up any campaign. Um, so if the players are joined and their portraits appear up in the top left here, um, then we can simply drag the... Um, portraits from the top left and just place it on the party sheet. Uh, we can also go into the characters menu uh, and we can uh, drag in uh, characters from there and add them to the uh, party sheet. Only the DM can do this um, but as you can see uh, you can you must have all the uh, players on the party sheet one way or another for most of the functionality to work. So now that we've got all the uh, players on the uh, party sheet, um, there are some things that the DM can do uh, using these rollable boxes down at the bottom here. Um, you can make an ability check for the entire party. We just need to select which ability we want to use, let's say intelligence, and then we can uh, type into this box the uh, difficulty class of the saving or the ability check that we want to make. Um, we see this little eye icon here, which if we mouse over it says show uh, role results. Uh, if we don't want the players to see uh, the role results, we can uh, click on this box to hide it. You'll actually only see this box here if we have a chat show DM roles set to on. If we set that to off, you can see that the eye icon has disappeared. But if you play with the uh, show GM roles on, uh, then you can hide uh, this role uh, in the party sheet from here by uh, greying out this uh, icon. And to make the role, we just need to uh, click on the rollable box there. And you can see that it's made a role, an ability check for all the characters that are on the character sheet. And it's told us uh, which ones failed and which ones succeeded. And you've exactly the same thing here for a skill check. So if we wanted to make a history skill check for the entire party with a DC of 12, then we can do that. Um, or we can make a saving throw if we wanted to make a charisma save at DC 10, then we can uh, do that. So the uh, Dungeon Master can do all that from these little boxes here, party-wide. Uh, there's also this attack box here. This is useful if, for example, uh, there's a trap or uh, some other thing that the... Uh, uh, Dungeon Master wants to make an attack uh, on and you can attack the entire party. Uh, you can put a, a bonus or a negative in here. So if we put a four in here um, and then just uh, click on that, then that's made an attack against the uh, party by just rolling a d20 um, and uh, adding in the bonus. And it shows whether we've hit uh, or missed the targets. If we um, just have a, a look at the uh, player sheet here, uh, the main tab, you can see that the players uh, don't have uh, this uh, 
down here, they can't make any of these uh, kind of rolls. And for some reason, they've got a little uh, eye icon here. I don't think that should be there. Um, but at any rate, the players don't have the ability to make that kind of roll. Only the uh, DM does. Uh, okay, so uh, that's really the main screen. The um, bits up here are just a summary of the character. Um, you can, as DM, make uh, ability checks here by double-clicking on any of these boxes. So if you wanted to make a constitution check for Bob the Cleric here, then you can do it from here. Um, and it tells you um, any special defenses and the armor class and the passive perception uh, for e each character along with their uh, hit points and uh, hit dice uh, still available. And of course they've got a little portrait and their name, class and race etc is there as well. Um, so there are some things that you can do as the DM from this page on the party sheet. So let's now have a look at the uh, inventory sheet. So this is split on the DM screen uh, into uh, two uh, sections. Uh, by default, the players uh, may not see this bottom half here. Um, but if we look at the uh, top part, this is where uh, partial items would be uh, dropped. So the uh, Dungeon Master can drag and drop partials uh, into this section here, and it will add whatever is in the treasure partial, including any coins, into the top half of the party sheet. And the bottom half of the party sheet uh, for the DM, uh, as uh, by default, they will see what the uh, characters have collectively in their uh, inventories. Now, at the moment, uh, nothing is showing because we've just put the characters onto the combat tracker. But if we click this refresh button here, then it'll refresh the uh, bottom part here and it'll show us uh, what all the party members have in their inventories. So as you can see at the moment, only uh, Bob the Cleric has got anything in their inventory actually. Um, but it will list here what party items they have. And if, for example, there were two backpacks and one was carried by Bob the Cleric and the other by Bob the Fighter, then it would show here uh, who has backpacks and which one was carrying which. Um, so this is for, it's useful for the DM, but the, the players can also see um, if the DM has switched on this option. The players can also see this uh, bottom portion here, which shows the collective uh, party coins uh, and the collective uh, party inventory. Um, okay, uh, let's uh, get uh, a couple of treasure parcels into the uh, uh, treasure uh, or the party sheet here. If we have a look at this first parcel here, we've, we can see that we've got a currency type which uh, isn't listed down the uh, left hand side. Uh, when we uh, drag this in here, uh, it will actually add that currency type to the uh, party sheet. Um, now, if you uh, wanted uh, trade bars to appear uh, in your campaign, then you would go to currencies and you would add trade bars in here as a currency, in which case, uh, if you did that, then trade bars would appear here by default. Um, but this um, shows that the trade bars can be added in uh, or any kind of form of currency really can be added in and it will it will be added to the uh, partial coins. Uh, so that's one uh, treasure partial. Uh, let's uh, drag in another one. And when we do so, you can see that the coins here um, are all added in and just accumulate from all the treasure partials that you uh, drag into the uh, party sheet. So we switch over to the uh, uh, player view uh, now and go into the inventory tab of the players. Um, the players can now see what's uh, in the party sheet. So the top half here is what is collectively um, accumulated or treasure which is accumulated uh, in the uh, party sheet from treasure parcels. And now players can actually uh, uh, drag in. So if we open up uh, Bob here and go to Bob's inventory, uh, Bob can drag items out of the party sheet and into their own inventory. So supposing Bob uh, fancied having this acid vial here, then they can simply just drag this and drop it into the uh, their inventory tab. And you can see down in the uh, chat that tells us that Bob has taken the acid vial from the party sheet and the acid vial is now appearing in his uh, party sheet, in his uh, inventory. 
Um, now, supposing that Bob no longer decided that he uh, wanted to, to have this uh, light crossbow anymore, and maybe he wants to sell it, uh, then he can drag this from his inventory and he can put it into uh, this area of the party sheet. So players can drag items uh, into and out of uh, their uh, own uh, inventories. Um, supposing Bob wanted to get rid of some torches here, if he just drags this, uh, it'll place one torch in. It'll re reduce his uh, number of torches that he's got by one, and it'll place one torch in here. If Bob wanted to get rid of all of the torches that he's carried, if he holds down shift whilst he is dragging, then the uh, whole bunch that he uh, had in his inventory will be moved. Uh, and similarly, if he made a mistake and he wants all these torches back, he can hold down shift and drag the torches in and all of the torches uh, will have come out of the party sheet and back into uh, Bob's inventory. So uh, players have the ability to uh, remove items or add items to the uh, party sheet uh, here up in the partial item section here. Can't do anything with coins, but they can uh, drag and drop uh, items into the uh, partial items here. Uh, and of course the uh, dungeon master can do the, exactly the same. They could open up Bob's character sheet and drag and drop stuff into uh, Bob's inventory from here. Um, so let's have a look at some of the other uh, things that the Dungeon Master can do with this section of the party sheet. Um, we can see here that we've got a couple of unidentified items. Uh, so the DM can identify these or make these identified by just, say, clicking on the ID toggle. Um, you can also uh, click on this Identify All Items button here to uh, identify all of the items which are unidentified in the inventory quickly. Um, so the DM can also uh, sell treasures. If we look at these two buttons here, we've got the sell treasures uh, button here uh, and below it we've got a percentage uh, that we can uh, alter or edit uh, to give us the percentage of the, the uh, that the shopkeeper is prepared to uh, pay. So this is the percentage of the item. So if we have a look at the black opal here, uh, it's worth a thousand gold pieces, uh, but at the moment it's set at 50, so the uh, players will only get 500 gold pieces uh, for each one sold. So the DM can uh, change this uh, value uh, just by typing in a, a new number, whatever the value the players have negotiated or whatever um, you've set your uh, campaign to for uh, NPCs who buy stuff from players. Um, and this will be uh, used to calculate how much gold the uh, players get or how much uh, coins the players get from uh, selling the items. Um, now, if uh, you uh, don't want uh, an, if, uh, an item to be sold, um, then you can uh, assign the item in the assignment column. So say, for example, the players didn't want to sell the uh, half plate armor, then you could put anything in uh, here. Uh, so let's, for example, let's put in mule. Um, because maybe the players have got a mule that they use to uh, carry uh, gear that they aren't currently carrying themselves, um, but they kind of want to keep that gear. So you could put in things like a chest or uh, a, any kind of thing, like a wagon or something like that, and these items will stay in the party sheet as if they are being carried by um, the mule or the chest or the wagon or whatever it is. Uh, you can also um, type in a uh, character's name here so that the item is actually assigned to the character, which we'll come to shortly. Um, so let's supposing that we, uh, you know, Bob uh, wanted to uh, keep keep the potion of acid resistance. So we can just start typing in Bob's name and then tab out of that. And supposing Bob the fighter uh, wanted to have the potion of fire breath don't want that sold so we can type in that character's name in here so if you type a name into the assignment column essentially this item will not get sold um, so the players have come to a, a conclusion that this is what they're going to keep this is what they're going to sell and once that's uh, done then the uh, dungeon master can just simply click on the sell items button the items will disappear from the uh, partial items here 
uh, it will show in chat exactly what uh, the items have uh, sold for and what has been sold and it will also give you the total amount of uh, gold pieces which um, the uh, which is accumulated from that sale um, and the amount of gold pieces uh, has been added or silver piece or whatever in this case it's all been gold but it's all been uh, accumulated into the partial coin section um, so now we're uh, able to come to the distribution of the treasure um, the uh, party has sold all the items that they want to sell they've decided who's going to get the potions they've decided they're going to keep the uh, half plate armor and the dm can then come down to this button here which is the distribute assignments and coins um, and we simply just click this button here um, and what it does is that it assigns it uh, it divides up all the treasure equally amongst the uh, party members so everything uh, that's been uh, accumulated everything that was in here has been divided by four and a quarter of it has been given to each uh, party member and it tells you in chat here that each party member received 892 gold one trade bar two silver pieces two platinum pieces and 25 copper pieces now anything that's left over anything that can't be divided equally amongst the party is just left in the uh, party sheet so we can see we've got a couple of silver pieces a gold piece and a couple of platinum pieces has been left over because uh, it doesn't divide by four so fantasy grounds doesn't do any calculation by um, for example converting the platinum pieces into gold and then distributing that it just leaves any odd amounts in the uh, party sheet uh, and you can see also um, that it told us here that the potion of resistance that was in the party sheet has been given to Bob and the potion of fire breath has been given to uh, Bob the fighter. And we saw also that when we did this, the uh, bottom part here uh, was redone. And we can see now that this is filled up with the uh, party coins. It shows the total number of trade bars, for example, which the party has collectively. And it shows you which each character or how much each character has in their uh, inventory. So each character in this case of a total of four trade bars and each party member has received one. And similarly, the total amount of gold pieces held by the party and the amount of gold which uh, each uh, party member has. Um, and if we look down here, we can see that the potion of acid resistance is now with uh, Bob the cleric and the potion of fire breath is in Bob the fighter's uh, party inventory. Uh, so all of that happened uh, with the uh, simple click of the uh, distribute button. And as you can see, it's left the half plate armor simply because there's nobody in the party called mule. Um, so the, that can't go anywhere. It has remained where it is. Um, so that's the uh, in inventory part of the uh, party sheet. Let's now have a look at the order tab. Um, when we uh, click on this, we get a, a screen which is divided into two. <clears throat> we've got the uh, watch order down the left hand side and we've got a formation in the right hand side with some buttons down at the bottom. Um, so the watch order is simplest. We just need to uh, type in a, a number in here. So if uh, Bob the Cleric is going to take the first watch, we could uh, type in a 1 here. If the fighter was going to take the second watch and uh, so on, we just uh, type in the numbers. Um, now they can be the same number. So if Bob the Cleric and Bob the Fighter were going to take the first watch and then the Wizard and Ranger the second watch, then you can just type in the numbers to whatever uh, number that uh, you uh, want to uh, set the watch order to be. Uh, only the DM can edit these numbers, um, the players can't. Um, and then we come to the uh, formation sheet and this shows the party's walking formation. Um, so there are a couple of methods of uh, setting this and um, the easiest method is using the uh, one, two and three buttons down here. So if we uh, click on the one uh, column, then it uh, fills up the uh, formation um, just simply by uh, adding all the party members in the uh, sheet. 
uh, and just uh, add it like that. Uh, we can uh, clear that and we could use the uh, 2 and it does a similar uh, thing or uh, we can use the uh, 3 and they'll uh, automatically go in using that uh, method. Um, on the alternatively you can uh, drag in the uh, portraits here uh, into an exact uh, formation so maybe if we wanted the uh, party formation to look something like this uh, then we can uh, do so. We just simply drag and drop them into these uh, squares. Um, and the players uh, can do this as well. The players can uh, do their own uh, party sheet. So if we uh, go to the uh, players view here, uh, we can see that the uh, players can uh, play around with this and they can decide uh, which order that they want to, to have as well. Um, once we've got everybody uh, on the party sheet, once everything is uh, fine, um, if we wanted to uh, place the uh, characters onto a battle map, uh, then the Dungeon Master can simply uh, drag this green skull icon here and place the uh, party on the uh, battle map. And as you can see, it has kept the uh, positions, the relative positions uh, of the party members um, when you drag that in. Now this actually also works, um, we can, uh, let's see, we can clear all this from here. Uh, if we go to the uh, combat tracker and we uh, drag in the uh, party members from here, then they retain the same um, uh, order that they were set in uh, if we uh, use that method of getting the uh, characters onto the uh, map. Um, and finally, uh, we can the, 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 this little icon here shows that this is where the uh, party is facing. So the party are going north in this case. Uh, you can change the uh, formation if the party are now moving uh, in this direction or if this direction. And you can just rotate the party uh, around and it'll, it'll just switch the party members to whichever direction uh, you uh, switch with the formation here. Uh, and as you probably saw earlier, you can clear the formation using this delete button. Okay, finally then, since this video is getting a bit long, let's look at the final tab, which is the experience points tab. Um, and this uh, for the Dungeon Master gives you um, a, a summary of the party members up here and how much uh, XP they've got to the next level and how much they currently have. And then we've got boxes here which we can use to uh, uh, add in encounters and quests. So if we um, open up the uh, encounters tab here, we've got a couple of encounters. So the Dungeon Master just simply drags the encounter in. Um, and then uh, they can, well, they can drag more than one in, but you, you normally do them one at a time. Um, and this just simply places the encounter into here. Um, it shows you the amount of uh, XP. There's a little checkbox here which shows whether or not it's been awarded. And then there's a link box which uh, opens up the encounter for the DM. Uh, once the encounter that you want to award the XP for is in here, then we can click on the award button. Um, this will uh, tick off the uh, two boxes here, uh, showing that these two uh, have been awarded. And the uh, characters all received um, a, an equal share of the XP. We can see here that uh, each of the characters received 100 XP, which is the total XP here of 400 divided by uh, four. And so each character gets 100. And this has updated the amount of XP that we have uh, shown in here. Um, if we have a look at quests, they're exactly the same. Um, so we've got a quest here, which is worth 100. We just uh, can drag this in. Um, and we can award this in exactly the same way by just clicking the award button and each party member got a 50 XP. Um, now, if you wanted to award a particular uh, character with a certain amount of XP, then you can just simply drag this uh, amount here and you can drop it into any of these boxes. So if uh, Bob the Ranger were to get 100 XP for doing something, then you can just drag that in. You can drag in from virtually any uh, numbered box uh, and just drop it onto this uh, XP uh, column here on the uh, left and it will award that particular 
uh, character only with that amount of uh, XP. Uh, you can do it from the uh, from here as well. Uh, we could, if uh, Bob the Wizard was to get 50 XP, we can just drop that in, and you can see down in the uh, chat here that 50 XP was awarded to uh, Bob the Wizard. Um, okay, uh, I think that's probably it for the party sheet. Uh, a little bit longer than usual, but I wanted to get it all in. So thank you very much for uh, watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.